Now, this is uh, basically a, a report on the, the advances that we've been doing. Uh, this project started uh, in January, so we started collecting data around January, and uh, we finished for this season just uh, last week. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, um, um, I've been working a lot in uh, trying to develop a new iPhone or Android-based um, apps uh, for agriculture, not only for agriculture, but uh, for other uses. And we're going to talk a little bit uh, more about uh, the different options that there. So the team first, uh, uh, Mark O'Connell, he's here. Um, Punch, which is uh, a postdoc of mine uh, in, at, the, at the University of Melbourne. And Lucas Palman, which is, uh, he is assisting all this stuff uh, related to mechatronics and um, uh, data analysis. So just uh, to uh, let you know, um, uh, there is a big project that is called the Vineyard of the Future. Well, I'm, I'm a senior lecturer in wine science, so probably you're going to think what I'm doing with, uh, with apples, but <laughs> that, uh, it's just a different kind of fruit. Um, the Vineyard of the Future initiative, uh, if you want to learn more about the different techniques I'm going to talk about today, uh, you can go to the website and uh, I, I post all the information there, uh, all the latest advances, uh, the latest publications, Etc. Not only for grapevines, but uh, in many other applications like uh, the Apple project that I'm uh, going to talk today. Uh, we use uh, a lot of uh, sensor, te sensor technology, uh, remote sensing uh, from the soil, plant, and atmosphere um, aspects. Uh, we, and we are not constricted to technology or to um, uh, digital technology. We use also biological sensors. So that's why it's the dog there. And it's always when I do the presentation in other parts of the world, they say, oh, we should put a kangaroo or a koala or something. But we are training dogs. Uh, it's pretty difficult to train koalas. <laughs> and they don't do much, anyways. Uh, so we are training dogs basically to detect um, uh, pests and diseases. Um, and uh, some, di some diseases that are really difficult to detect, like, for example, uh, wood based diseased diseases or uh, phylloxera. Now, phylloxera is really difficult to detect, or uh, you need to go into the ground with an, an entomologist with a magnifying glass. Uh, but they are insects, so they produce pheromones, and they, you can train dogs to detect them. So we had preliminary uh, really good results, and um, the basic thing is that we, we couple the biological sensors with technology. So we, we put a, a strap to uh, a telephone or a, a smartphone strapped to the dog, and uh, there is an app that detects uh, the, all the accelerometer uh, data every second and the GPS. So the dogs are trained to sit, and then you record that, and then you can map, basically. We're not using it only to detect pests and diseases. There's a project with, uh, to detect truffle, and the dogs are trained to detect truffle. Actually, the pigs are better, but uh, the only problem with pigs is that they eat it. <laughs> so there are, there are some growers that they, they've lost fingers, like trying to get the, the truffle from the mouth of them. It's $4,000 per kilo. OK, so from the project, um, we, uh, we started with the premises that um, apple diameter estimation is, uh, and final size prediction of apples is really important, uh, not only for apples, for different fruits, and this uh, can be extrapolated to other fruits as well. Um, it's time consuming, the, this manual measurement something now. I started doing the first cur curves of um, growth of apples, I remember, like 20 years ago. And the first product that we did 20 years ago was uh, just a, a chart for growers. So then they measure the apples, then they say, okay, af uh, and they, days after full bloom, and then they can see the, the harvest. It was really rough, but now, now it's a little bit more technological. Um, climate change scenarios are forecast to, uh, uh, with more frequent and um, intense climatic anomalies, such as uh, heat waves, uh, with high sunburn risk implications, as uh, um, Ian uh, talked before. Smartphones and tablet PCs capabilities with the HD cameras, and you are getting more and more high resolution cameras uh, in phones, uh, can be coupled with uh, portable infrared thermal cameras like the FLIR 1. Uh, fruit diameter using computer vision, biomodeling, using forecast temperature data from the Bureau of Meteorology, where you can forecast up to 60 days. I think it's up to 90 as well, but obviously it's less precision. Um, thermal distribution within fruits, so you can have um, an, a, an instantaneous estimation of um, uh, sun exposure and the temperature of the, the different fruits. And uh, you can obtain also leaf area index to try to correlate or get more information if you, if you want to generate a model. Uh, that is the, the main idea of the project, trying to get as much information as we can and try to generate a, a, a more holistic model. 
And then uh, the, the, the final idea is try to have some burn estimation as well. So the, the uh, I'm not to dwell much into that, but um, uh, we collected, we actually worked on six years of data from Tatura, uh, that was uh, uh, thanks to Mark, and uh, we modeled the growth according to those six years. So the basic idea is uh, uh, there's a sigmoidal growth that we all know that Apple follows, pairs as well. Um, so then uh, we need to parameter parameterize all the different factors to generate a, a continuous model and it's, that is going to be flexible according to the different uh, temperature readings or the temperature forecast. So we've, we've done that, that, that was pretty easy, it's what I did 20 years ago, and uh, we correlated with the thermal, uh, thermal time. So according to the predictions of um, temperatures we can uh, and the measurements of uh, diameter, you can predict uh, with high accuracy um, the final uh, caliber of your fruit uh, at harvest. So the technology that we're using is, uh, well, smartphones and um, um, the FLIR 1 infrared them, uh, thermal camera is around $400, it's uh, getting lower and lower. Uh, they are cheaper cameras as, actually. Um, <coughs> and the basic idea is uh, it gives you um, um, a co-registration between the digital image and the infrared information. So every pixel uh, from a grid of 90 by 60 pixels, uh, every pixel is going to give you a temperature reading. So the way that we are doing uh, uh, the recognition of the fruit and uh, the size, uh, remember that we need to have like a millimeter uh, um, precision to get into the models and uh, predict better the final size is um, doing um, uh, image segmentations and recognition of uh, fruits and recognitions of all the, of the, um, the reference marks as well. We 3D printed uh, reference marks so we know, and they're like little balls at the end, so we know uh, the specific diameter and that's a, a reference. We need to have a reference to start with uh, and that is a problem that NASA even have. So in all the, when they go to any planet uh, and they take a picture, they need to have a reference. So they do it with laser. Uh, that is a little bit um, expensive technology still for precision up to one millimeter. Uh, so we're using markers. Uh, so the different algorithms that we are creating is uh, generating the, uh, um, the segmentation to recognize the markers and then recognize the fruit. Now the markers are recognizing different color, color bands and the fruits obviously in the RGB region. And then when you get the, uh, uh, the automatic um, diameter from the different fruits that you, you're monitoring, you pass it through the models, uh, you have the forecast from the Bureau of Meteorology for 45 or 60 days, and then the model will give you um, a final size of the fruit. Now once you recognize the fruit, since I told you that uh, there is a co-registration between the digital and the thermal, uh, you can use, use those uh, recognitions to get, generate a mask and then obtain the temperature of each fruit automatically as well. And then uh, with that one and temperature of the day, uh, you can plug models like uh, Ian talked before. Uh, we can plug any model into the, the app uh, since the information is going to be there for temperature, but plus you're going to have information from the distribution of uh, the temperature in the fruit fruit exposure and all those, all those factors. Also, we are trying to implement another app that we developed uh, a while ago to uh, um, uh, monitor leaf area index. Uh, just with an image from your smartphone uh, beneath the, the canopy, you can obtain leaf area index, canopy cover, uh, canopy porosity, uh, clamping index. So there are five different factors that you can obtain. Uh, that app is for free and it's available uh, in that link. So if you, can, if you want to download it, uh, the, um, the Android version is going to be probably available next week. Um, but this is the thing about the app development. So this app, we started it probably three years ago and we released it to the public uh, last October. So the app is not something that you can develop from overnight, especially for agriculture. You need to validate it and you need to get more data from other regions. Otherwise, the app is going to work only in Tatura, <laughs> basically. Um, so this app has been validated for many, many regions here in Australia, it's been validated in Chile, in Spain, in America, it's been validated in China, and not only for grapevines, but apple trees, uh, citrus, um, uh, cherry trees, eucalyptus trees, that's why it took three years, okay? But you can, now the, uh, the app, it can be jointly with the app that we are uh, doing now, so you can obtain leaf area index at the same time that you're taking the pictures for, for the fruits. 
So the progress up to date is uh, we generate all the models from the six seasons. Uh, so it's not for use, it's six seasons uh, of growth data from here, from Tatura. That process is really easy. Once you have the data, the modeling is, um, it doesn't take much. The image, uh, an infrared thermography acquisition system has been developed and we have already half, of, half a seasons, season of data. We're gonna have an, another half season of data next year. We can ha have a full season because uh, the grant is from January to December. Um, Automated recognition system the, under development, uh, test of 15 images, that is the results uh, I'm gonna show you later. And the automated extraction of extraction of forecast, maximum and minimum temperatures, 45 days for the Wurum meteorology, it's been done. Uh, and the pipeline or analysis is under progress. I'll show you the segmentation approach that uh, we are doing, but uh, we are more interested in something more uh, elegant. So we are trying to uh, do algorithms now based on artificial neural network or uh, machine learning. So that means that uh, when you take a picture, for example, from all of you here, uh, you see little squares in your camera. So that is automatic recognition of faces. Now that recognition is uh, uh, by training an algorithm to recognize faces. So we are trying to do the same thing to recognize fruits. Okay, so that is more elegant than just seg segmentation. The segmentation, it needs a little bit or a, a level or, of assistance from the user. So you, uh, if uh, the segmentation is not top notch, you can change it until you recognize the fruit, um, the roundness. So it's better the second approach, so we are working on that at the moment. This is some um, results up to date with this, the first approach that I told you. Uh, the X is the measured apple diameter, so that is with calipers. And the Y is the estimated apple diameter from the images. And you can see that the, uh, the, the, the regression is pretty good. Uh, anything over 0 0.8 for any application that you're trying to do is commercially applicable. And the error is uh, plus minus 2.3 millimeters, and that is like nothing if you think that you're getting an average per tree or an average per a number of trees. Uh, 2.3 millimeters actually uh, falls below the average. Uh, so the precision is really high. Mm -hmm.